Elizabeth Knott lived during a time when trying to decide what was right and what was wrong was very confusing. So many people all had different ideas of what it meant to be a follower of Jesus Christ. Elizabeth followed Jesus by being his hands and feet and avoiding the political fights. But sometimes, avoiding political fights proves to be impossible. And this is her story. We are still in the time period of the English Civil War and the fight between Parliament and the throne. In the last few episodes, we talked about the death of King Charles and the time when Parliament was running without a king. King Charles II had taken the throne and was recognized in Scotland. But when the people of England wanted the king back on the throne, King Charles took power in England and turned on the churches that would not see him as the head of the church. There was much conflict between the people who supported the parliament and those who supported the throne. There was so much conflict in the churches as well, Catholics and Anglicans, then also the Puritans, all mixed into the fight between how much power the throne should have in the church, if any control at all. So, people were fighting about how much power the throne had in government and how much power they had in the church. It was the time of serious conflict. People were willing to die over these conflicts, turn on their own family. Their side of the argument was the only right side, and the other side was evil and probably from Satan. So how did that affect just the regular person living in England? Let's look at the life of Elizabeth Knott. Elizabeth was part of the Anabaptist movement. They believed in pacifism, and they also rejected infant baptism. Those were two things that everyone hated. Elizabeth's father, Anthony Forgill, had raised Elizabeth to see the world as people who needed Jesus and people who Jesus loved. She should love all people and treat all people the same, regardless of what church they belonged to or what political argument they fell on. Elizabeth lived during this time period as just a normal, regular woman. She did what women did in the 1600s. She never led an army or a revolution. In fact, until her death, no one even knew who she was. But every day, she simply found ways to help people. She would make extra food and feed the poor, and anyone who asked for help, she assumed they had been sent to her from God, and she would help them. Sometimes helping them meant letting people stay in her home. Sometimes it meant feeding them. When the Puritans were persecuted, she found herself having more and more people stay in her home. People who needed help began to learn that they could go to Elizabeth for help. Catholics, Anglicans, Puritans, they all would go to her if they needed something, and she would help. Those loyal to the throne were welcome, and those loyal to the parliament were welcome. Elizabeth was an older lady by the time the Civil War broke out, and she continued to help whoever needed help. Even though the tensions had exploded into war, she still kept her Anabaptist theology, and she remained passive. God blessed Elizabeth's sacrifice, and by this point, she'd become a small shop owner in the city of London. One day, a man came to Elizabeth for help. His name was James Burton, and Elizabeth as always, agreed to help him. And that choice changed everything. We need to look back and figure out who this James Burton was. Those loyal to Parliament did not like Charles II, and they really did not like that King Charles II was so close to Francis King Louis XIV. Charles and his brother James claimed it to be Anglican, but they acted like Catholics. Then, James openly converted to Catholicism, and that act started a new revolt. In 1681, Parliament brought a bill forward that would say that James could never take the throne. Charles II dissolved Parliament before they could vote, so the bill never went through. A new party, called the Country Party, was started specifically to oppose the throne. 
this party eventually became known as the Whigs Party. The Whigs wanted constitutional monarchism. They opposed the absolute monarchy, which gave the throne full authority over the people. Temperaments were really high at this point, and people were willing and ready to fight. And they came up with a plan. The Rio House was a large mansion that was surrounded by a moat. The house was owned by a man named Richard Rumbold. He had fought in the Civil War. A group of Whigs came up with an idea, along with Richard, to hide men around the grounds of the mansion. And then, they would invite the king and the duke to come. Because the mansion was surrounded by a moat, the king and his brother would be trapped, and they could be killed. April of 1683, there was a huge town event. A race that people came from all around to see. The king and the duke were also planning on being at this event. They, of course, needed a place to stay, and Richard offered the Ryer House. The king and duke accepted the offer. They were to arrive April the 1st, and the plan was put in motion. However, a fire suddenly broke out in town, and it spread quickly. Soon, over half of the town burned to the ground. The race was cancelled, and so was the trip for the king and the duke, and the plot was ruined. Even though it never happened, People were still talking about it, and a man named Josiah Kingling told a man he thought was a Whig, Sir Leon Jenkins. However, Sir Leon Jenkins told the king about the plot on June 12, 1683. And people began to round up anyone who was part of the plan, and one man named James Burton was named as a member of the assassins, and the king sent out men to find James. James was on the run, and he fled down the streets of London. He ran into the shop of Elizabeth and begged her for help. Elizabeth had always helped anyone who asked for help, and she hid James from the soldiers. Then, once the soldiers had passed, she gave James some money to help him escape. James left with the money, but he was captured by the soldiers and arrested. In court, he was offered a plea. The judge, Judge Jeffrings, was loyal to the throne, In fact, King James II had used James Jeffreys many times to kill his enemies. King Charles II and Duke James used Judge Jeffreys to make sure that no one would ever be part of a plan like this again. Judge Jeffreys said he wanted to find anyone who helped and aided the group. So, he offered James Burton a deal. Give him a name of someone who helped him, and then James could go free. James Burton gave one name. Elizabeth, an elderly shop owner in London. What a shock for Elizabeth when soldiers came to her little shop and arrested her for treason. As Elizabeth was taken to court, people who she had helped over the years all came to her defense. No one wanted to see Elizabeth hurt. Everyone knew that she was innocent, had nothing to do with a plot to kill the king and the duke, and that she was not political at all. But Judge Jeffreys didn't care. He found her guilty and sentenced her to death by burning at the stake. This shocked people because those who were part of the plan were all found guilty and sentenced to either hanging or beheading, a death that is quick. The worst punishment and the longest and most painful death was for an elderly lady who had helped a man who was running from the soldiers. People begged for her to be given the sentence of hanging, but the court refused. October 23, 1685, Elizabeth stood on top of a stack of hay and wood as the wood was lit on fire. She bent down and grabbed hay and piled it high around her so that she would burn fast and the death would be quicker. She smiled at the people who all stood around watching in horror. There was not a single person present who believed that the punishment was just. As she died, one man stood by watching in horror. His name was William Penn, and this was the moment he knew that it was impossible to save England. If there was any chance to save society, it would require a new country. We talked about William Penn in our episode called Quakers. William Penn was the founder of Pennsylvania. Elizabeth's death was the final breaking point for the people. The throne saw that they had taken things too far. They lost any respect left from the people. The death sentence of burning at the stake 
would never again be used for a woman. Elizabeth would be the last woman burned at the stake in England. After her death, suddenly the sky turned a dark color and a fierce storm broke out. Thunder and lightning and wind. Everybody ran for cover and people thought that the vengeance of God was being aimed on them for the murder of an innocent woman who had loved and served him her whole life. The storm lasted a really long time, and when it finally ended, it left a lot of damage behind. Why did I pick the story of Elizabeth to tell for church history? Well, I felt her story gives us an idea of the temperature of this time period. The reason we study church history is because Satan doesn't really come up with new things. He attacks the church today the same way he attacked the church in the 1600s. But remember, God doesn't change either. We serve the same God Elizabeth served. Doing the right thing doesn't always mean that things are going to go well for you in the end. But still, doing the right thing is the right thing. So today, we still ask the question, how much control should the government have over our churches? We still face courts. We still face unjust judges. But we can remember that no matter what, God doesn't change. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. And really, it's eternity that matters. So we continue to do the right thing, to serve God and love Him. For more podcasts, blogs, and videos, you can visit my website at lauraleesiemens.com. And I'll see you again next week for more church history. 